What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We are back once again, and we are going to be talking about Season 3 of Castlevania. Now, there's some spoilers. I'm going to go into a lot of uh, spoilers about each of the characters. Now, if you guys don't want to be spoiled, go ahead and click off the video, but we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Now, Season 3 uh, takes off literally uh, a month after Season 2 events. Dracula has been killed. The war has so-called ceased against the vampires and the humans. Now, uh... I want to say a good fourth or a good half of Dracula's war council was eliminated and we had where uh, Carmilla and part of her army took Hector to her castle up in the north and then you had where uh, Iacard stayed behind and Trevor and, Cy uh, Trevor and Cypher they went on their own adventures now well, let's go ahead and talk about Iacard he goes um, the entirety of this season where he is alone he's he's pretty much he feels like he's going insane because in the entirety of this season he is alone and then he finally meets two individuals that are from i believe it was either china or japan and they were supposedly prisoners of one of the ones that was in dracula's war council now they came to Ayakar because they wanted him to train them and he goes above and beyond really to take care of <clears throat> these two individuals that he sees as potential friends uh comrades and warriors to fight against evil and to fight against uh the entirety of uh monsters and they kind of go back and forth with like he's not showing them everything he felt like that that he's kind of hiding something from them but he shows them the belmont crypt he shows them the weapons of Dracula's castle, aka now his castle now, and right when he's laying his guard down, he's making them food, he's training them, he's giving them information. These two individuals just betray him at the very last minute. They betray him. They pretty much seduce him uh, with uh, um, with sex, and then they capture him, and then they're going to try to kill him. But then he kills them at the last minute and he just breaks down and he just he gets to a realization that it ain't just humanity that's evil but well not monsters that are evil but humanity can be as well and at the very end of the scene we see where he's walking back from getting food fish um things of that nature and he just says well i could have put a uh you know do not go inside and he basically did like his father did was basically put a spike through them and head outside the door and which is a sign all by itself then we see where trevor and cypher go through different adventures they're trying to uh help go through cypher's having fun because she's taking a real liking to trevor uh they ever since they met they've become inseparable now they really are because they've pretty much developed a relationship they are a couple now and they stumble upon this town where uh, after they kill some demons, they are invited to stay in the town for a little bit. But then they notice that this rogue, uh, rogue monks are somehow trying to do something. And there's an investigation through the entire town. Then we meet another character who's trying to help with his own agenda. And so they kind of help each other. And then throughout the entirety of the season, we see that these monks are somehow trying to bring Dracula back. Because when they were attacked one night, they had kept... A demon in the uh, the basement of their church and basically what the demon wanted them to do was to somehow use him for months to try to unleash a portal to hell to bring back Dracula because there was a huge rumor of that's where Dracula's wife was and we do get to see that at the very last of the season where the portal does get open and you see where Dracula is holding his wife in hell so that's not essentially what he wanted he wanted to find his wife he did and he there may be um in season four where they try to bring him back again there's no guarantee of that but there is where uh trevor as well as uh cypher but cypher learns that humanity can be just as cruel as well so in the entirety of the season every character sees the cruel cruelness of both vampires and monsters and humanity at the exact same time because we see where as soon as the events settle, where they where they stop this event from occurring, they do see from one of the characters he was uh, a very evil human being, which he was basically a monster in disguise, and they 
figure that out at the very last minute and Cypher kind of got her eyes open to where not everybody is who they seem to be and that opened up her eyes as well as how bad humanity can be and Trevor is one of those where he is imbalanced but again from a lot of what I've seen on interviews and a lot of things I've seen on different parts of the characters that uh, if Cypher becomes like him, there's really no more balancing between the two because Cypher somehow balances him. Then we also get to see Isaac. He is in the process of building a monster army. We see him go to place to place. He's wanting to build an army to take his revenge against uh, Hector as well as Carmilla in the process. So we do see where Isaac goes through this entirety of meeting different humans along his journey. We see him meet um, a captain of a boat who becomes like a comrade of his. Then he meets another uh, forge master woman who tells him what happened to her. So he meets kind people along the way, but as soon as he meets someone kind, he lets his guard down just for a second, and then when he just wants to go in peace and go along his way, he doesn't want to harm nobody, he doesn't want to command his monsters to kill anybody, they just tell him, okay, well, uh, doesn't matter, we're, we're going to fight you, and he just, it's like, why do I keep trying to be peaceful, why do I keep trying to just go along my way when everybody wants to start a problem with me, and then we see where Hector, he was captured by Carmilla, and then we get to be introduced by her three sisters, who is really her war council uh she's wanting again in season two i believe we, we kept on seeing her trying to basically overthrow dracula at a time and that's what caused hector to go on the different side of the line where we do see where hector is being treated uh by the sisters as a prisoner then the sister lenore she tries to persuade him in different manners to come over to their side that you know he'll be treated very fairly he can help create monsters for them and he will not be uh, like how, how she thought Dracula basically just threw him out there. Basically, he was going to kill him at some point. So it really does make uh, Hector rethink a few things. And then Lenore does seduce him to where he does kind of fall for her. And he lets his guard down and they sleep together. And then she binds him to be a slave to her where any... Thing that he makes as a monster for a forge master any monsters where now he wears a blood ring on his finger that she forged to basically have him submit to her and binds any monster that he creates to her to where it will obey him but it will not hurt her or her sisters and that she linked those other rings as well and her sisters at the same time Carmilla wants to overthrow the western and eastern world she wants to go forth towards the eastern world because there's more toward the eastern front than the western front so she pretty much is now taking dracula's uh plan in a certain manner where she still wants to rule the world with her sisters and have enough blood to sustain them as well as rule and have humans as slaves so this season was absolutely insane uh there was a lot of both evil on both sides we got to see there was a lot of uh, not really development, but we got to see more of each character's emotional standpoint because in last season, we got to see them be very strong, trying to defeat Dracula, and then we got to see more um, vulnerableness in these characters. But I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a badass season. It was really crazy because you never knew what was going to happen until it actually happened. There was certain uh, times where you were kind of curious of what was going to happen, if this was going to happen or if that was really going to happen. So it's pretty much guessing into like the last minute until like I think season, not season, but like episode eight, nine, something like that. But there are 10 episodes. They're about 30 minutes each. Uh, so very well done. The animation was very well done, I have to say. Uh, voice acting was absolutely incredible. Uh, can't, can't get enough of this series. I, I just hope that they make more uh, seasons for us to enjoy. Uh, 10 episodes, I think, was mm, suffice. Because I do believe that you can't go that far on sometimes on an a animated series. So, would like to see 10 episodes more of uh, Castlevania. So, let me know what you guys think about Castlevania Season 3. If you guys checked it out, what you guys think about it? Did you hate it? Did you like it? I'd like to know your thoughts about it in the comments down below. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe and link to the below. And I'll see you guys on the very next one. See you later.